Um, thank you so much to spending your Friday afternoon today. I'm really grateful to see so many Indonesian people interested in this issue. Before I start, how many people here have been to Myanmar? Great, great. I'm glad to see so many hands. So the topic that I want to share with you today is the story of a country that's just opening up to the world and go through a technology revolution. Why is this important? So in August 2017, almost a million Rohingya fled Myanmar to Bangladesh. This is one of the fast growing refugee crises in the world. And you may ask, what is this has to do with Facebook? I wonder Mark Zuckerberg might ask himself the same question the day he built Facebook. He built Facebook with the aim of connected world. I don't think he would imagine one day his two would divide it and be a threat to democracy. So in order to understand this full story, it's really important to understand Myanmar context. Myanmar is a country of 53 million people. It has the longest civil war in the world. You may heard a lot about Rohingya, but actually the country has more than 135 ethnic cities. It's pretty diverse. It has amazing food, especially the salad. So in 2015, it's the time of change for Myanmar. The country has been closed for five decades. They have the first free and fair election on 2015, and Aung San Suu Kyi party got in power. It was at the same time, so there was a transition toward democracy, and it was the same time with the technological revolution. In 2009, if you go to Myanmar and you want to buy a SIM card, do you not guess how much would it cost? Anybody? Any number? 15,000? Really close. It cost about $2,000 in 2009. And five years ago, 2014, SIM cards cost $200. And it's not really easy to buy. You have to get it from the black market. Today, SIM card costs only $1. Around 2014, only 1% of the population had access to the internet. Can you imagine that? Five years ago, only 1% of the whole country had access to the internet. And here we go. After we have access to internet, Facebook came to Myanmar. You often hear this word that Facebook is the internet for most people in Myanmar, <laughs> right? So there are about 20 million users in Myanmar who is using Facebook. I often ask myself this question, why Facebook is the internet for most people in Myanmar? And I think there's three reasons. The first reason is that when you go to the shop, mobile shop, the, the mobile phone that you bought, is, Facebook is already pre-installed, right? So for a country that nobody ever seen mobile phone before, you go to the shop, and on your mobile, there's Facebook. That's really easy to use. That's one reason. The second reason was um, the price of using Facebook was really low. When Facebook entry Myanmar, they make a deal with the mobile com telecom company that they would give a free basic program. So basically, you could use Facebook for free. So it's free and it's easy. Why don't you want to use it, right? <laughs> and the third reason, on Facebook, you have everything at once. You can talk to your friends. You can read the news. You can send message. So it's all in one application, which is really easy to use for a country that nobody ever used any application before. So because of these three reasons, Facebook became really popular in Myanmar. However, at that, I, re I still remember at the time around 2014 when I go and buy the first SIM card. I was so excited and hopeful. I look around. It was the time of change in Myanmar, and it was the time of hope. 
I still remember everybody was so excited. We look at technology as a way to bring us democracy and a way for us to express ourselves. However, the reality is not like that. Even though we have access to internet, but access to internet is not equal to freedom of expression. What we seen was the opposite. There were a lot, there were a lot of arrests of the media and a lot of activists were in jail because they expressed themselves. This is my friend, Walong and Josu Wu. They are the hero of press freedom. The two of them covering issue of Rohingya and they were in jail for 14 years at that time. They were charged for 14 years in jail. However, they just got released last year. So one reason is that there is a lack of legal protections in Myanmar. During 2013, there was this telecommunication law which said that if you're defaming someone or if you're accusing someone, you would be in jail for three years. And this law is really weak, right? So I could just say something that you don't like and you can go to the police and say that according to 66D law, Saijai this, this. So I might be in jail for three years. During NLD time, which is Aung San Suu Kyi party, we saw the increase of people and journalists who was in jail. About 200 cases were arrested by the time that I'm talking now. According to this data, you can see the charge is growing up really quickly. So, now I, see, I think that you already have the understanding of the context, right? The country was closed for a long time. We just have access to technology. The legal system is not in place. At the same time, we have the long ethnic war happening. This is a lot in one country. So this is the timeline of what happening during the time in Myanmar. Around June 2012, it was the first wave of anti-Rohingya. It was the same time that the country just got have access to internet. People start using Facebook around 2012 as a way to share the message to each other. And there is one incident which is quite significant in Myanmar history. There was a Buddhist woman who was raped by the Muslim men at that time after the Rohingya crisis. And the spokesperson from the government posted this online and saying that right now we have a threat from the Rohingya. So the, these two incidents is unrelated, but the, the fact that he posting that on Facebook, it was shared widely online. So that was the first time that Facebook was used. The other important incident was on June 2014. There were riots in Mandalay, which is one of the cities in Myanmar. And at that time, people used Facebook to send messages to each other. The government see and they know that this is not good. So they try to find a way to contact Facebook. But at that time, Facebook doesn't have anything really in place in Myanmar. The government didn't manage to connect to Facebook. Can you guess what they do? Exactly, I hear the correct word here. So this, they decided to block Facebook in Myanmar at that time, during 2014. So during 2017, as you know, this is what the big Rohingya crisis happened. But I just want to go back on 2014, when this crisis happened. Do you wanna guess how many Facebook content moderator in Burmese, or content fact checker, what do you call it, content reviewer from Facebook that can speak Burmese in 2014? One, correct, it was one. And around 2015, at that time, there's more people who are using Facebook. Around the, the whole country, there are about 7.3 million Facebook users. Do you wanna guess how many content reviewer with 7.3 million population that use Facebook, how many content reviewer? More than one, correct. <laughs> of course, more than one. Do you not guess? 100? No, it was five. So with 7.3 million people, there are only five content reviewer. I wish that Facebook already learned from what happened during 2014, so we didn't need to have a tragedy with the Rohingya crisis on 2017, but they didn't learn. You can see that this is what people have been using the platform. So one message will be sent 
to the Buddhist group and the other message will be sent to the Muslim group. And the important part of this message is that both of the message ask people to do two things. First, is ask people to take action. And the second thing is ask people to share. So you can imagine that in the country in which people get access to information via Facebook and you receive this message, a lot of people tend to think that what happened on Facebook is true. Just imagine yourself, put yourself in the shoe that you've never been ex exposed to any application. This is the first time you got the mobile phone and you got this message, right? Because of what happening in the country and there's no legal system in place and we didn't see Facebook take any action. A group of six civil society, we are a small organization that's based in Yangon. We saw this happening since 2014. One of the, one of the uh, founders in my organization has warned Facebook direct personally. He went to California and talked to Facebook executive that this is happening. And I know from a lot of people that they have been talking to Facebook that be careful this is happening, but Facebook take no action. So we decided that as a civil society, we're gonna write a letter together and send it to Mark Zuckerberg to take action. And that letter was published on the New York Times. In this letter, we, we addressed three key important issues. First, it seemed like Facebook doesn't do a good job of moderating. It seemed like Facebook rely and dependent on civil society to report the issue which is just supposed to be the job of the Facebook, right? But we end up doing that job for Facebook. And also, the second issue is that there, there were little, very little content reviewer, right? In the country, the 20 million people use Facebook. We need more people, we need more resource to invest in Myanmar. If Facebook actually care about this topic, you need to put more people who are working on these issues. And the third is that we need more transparency from Facebook. What happened was after we, in the past, when we sent information to Facebook, we didn't really hear back for a couple months. We don't really know what system that Facebook has in place. Do they fix this issue or not? So we ask for these three key messages to be changed. So, in order to understand how this whole thing happened, it's really important to understand how social media and how messaging work. Okay, this is the con sorry, this is the content from Facebook. I took this from Facebook um, website. So if you can see this graph, what you ca what can you tell me? I want you have to have one minute to process this information because it's a very critical information. Sorry, more hate, more engagement. That's correct. Can you see this line is the line that the content will be more toward hate speech. This is the engagement, right? So the more that the content moves toward hate speech, you have more people engage, more people share, more people like, more comment, right? So this is how, the, how Facebook works currently. So therefore, Facebook responds to this saying that we are aware of this is happening because this is from Facebook website. <laughs> they say that, okay, now we would like to change it. So on the newsletter that Facebook sent out, they said that in the past, this is the picture that's happening. They wanted to adjust it in the way that if the content moved toward hate speech, they want to reduce the share and make, make less people seeing it. Yeah, so this is like one response from Facebook. And the second response from Facebook, they said that they want to put more resource in Myanmar, having more people working in the country. And also the third response is that one of the critical challenge issue of working in Myanmar is because Burmese tech is so complicated. It's very really difficult, it's not Unicode. Myanmar is the only one country in the world that the tech, the tech is not Unicode, the front is not Unicode. So it's very really difficult to search or to monitor the content. 
So Facebook is working on their technological part to fix that issue. So these are the three things that Facebook said that they will try to change in Myanmar. One more thing, they also want to put more resource on AI and fact checker. So these are the data that Facebook show that they've been detecting hate speech before people reporting it. So this is the worldwide data, which is show that 65% of hate speech right now, Facebook detect first before instead of like user reporting it. But do you see an issue with this graph? The issue is that this is the information for all over the world, right? What I need is what happening in Myanmar, right? This could be like amazing, but this could happen in Germany, right? It could, in Myanmar, it could be that nobody checking or reporting. So what we ask from Facebook is that more country-specific data, so it would help the civil society make a decision. So what's next? We really need to see concrete change from Facebook. Facebook cannot take this issue as a PR issue. They need to really have genuine way that they want to change what's happening in Myanmar. The first, issue, the first thing that we want to see more is in-country prison. Until the time that I'm talking now, Facebook doesn't have any permanent staff in Myanmar. They don't have an office in Myanmar. All the Facebook team is in Singapore or Dublin. They five people in to Myanmar. But I think it's a good progress that now, in 2019, Facebook have at least, I think, seven people working on Myanmar issue. And two, of, two or three of those people are Burmese people who can read the, con who can read the text, they read the Burmese text. So we need more in-country prisons. The second thing that we need more, that a concrete change, is that we need ongoing consultation. Consultation is the word, it's not update. What we feel from the engagement with Facebook so far is mainly Facebook come and update us on what's on what happening. But we need a two-way conversation. The third part is that we really need to have emergency response mechanism to the upcoming 2020 elections. We have so many lessons learned from Rohingya crisis, and we know that election is coming 2020. We need a really clear mechanism to respond to that. And the last part is that we need Facebook to help cleaning up bad actors. So in the past, I do think that Facebook had done a great job of removing some of the bad actors in Myanmar, that we know that they are the one who's sending all this hate speech. But however, Recently, Facebook removed like four ethnic armed groups that they mentioned that these are the bad actors. But from the civil society standpoint, we need to have a more transparent why Facebook removed these four groups instead of like 12 ethnic armed groups that they have in Myanmar. We need to, Facebook needs to be more transparent, letting us know why they're removing certain groups or why they're not removing certain groups. So, what is next? I just want to emphasize that what happening in Myanmar could happen anywhere. This is the first, this is, we are in the situation in which the big social media company came into the country that has no access to technology. And they haven't think through this. So this is happening, right? However, we cannot think of this as a Facebook issue. Rohingya crisis exists before Facebook. Facebook are the one who amplify this issue, and yes, Facebook needs to take responsibility, but we cannot blame this whole thing entirely on Facebook. So we need, so social media company need to take action, and it's the action that I mentioned earlier. However, the government need to take action. The government need to set up a clear legal system to monitor this social media that come into the country. The government need to make sure that citizens are aware of digital literacy to be equipped with this wave and tsunami of this new technology. Political parties need to be aware of in the election. They need to be transparent on how they use Facebook app, especially all the political leader, because they are the one that people will follow and share their message. So they need to be equipped with digital literacy. Civil society need to be the watchdog of, 
all this is happening, they need to make, take, make sure that check the social media company, making sure that be the voice when they see something wrong happening and when the government do nothing, they need to speak up. And lastly, citizens. With all of you sitting here, we will all facing this issue of hate speech and fake news. Our role is to think critically with what we see and question what we see. So at the end, we did the whole story. I think there are two lessons learned. The first lesson learned is that in the future, there will be new Facebook. There will be new technology. And it's very important for the technology company, billion dollar technology company, to think about what is human right impact of your technology, right? I think like Mark Zuckerberg, the next Mark Zuckerberg has to think about what is the impact of my technology to democracy? They need to think, of, think deeply about this question before implementing that technology in any country. Secondly, the good news of all of this, what I saw is how civil society and citizens come together, especially in Myanmar context, to make a change. You can see that we are six civil society in Myanmar in a small town in Yangon, and we wrote a letter to Mark Zuckerberg to ask him to make some change. In this event, I see some hope. When the government, we cannot take, ask government to take accountability for what happened, and we cannot ask the big company to make change, this is the role of civil society that I want to see more happening in the world. Thank you.